Good afternoon and welcome to Jeff and the Rabbi. You know, have you ever been stopped at a light behind one of those cars with a coexist bumper sticker on it? You know, they're great kind of cars. They usually Subaru. have a Subaru. It usually could be a Subaru. But if you notice, they also have about five to ten other uh, <laughs> stickers all over the back of the car, usually with profound sayings like, protect the Beatles, the, uh, the bug, not the band, <laughs> and uh, don't eat anything with eyeballs, or save the left-handed Kenyan transgender orangutans. You know, these people must be the best folks in the entire world. If we would just all put bumper stickers on the back of our car showing how much we care, the world would be a better place. Or would it? Is it possible that I can be a good person without without really caring if an orange-looking monkey wears heels or flings his poop at his buddies with his left hand instead of his right? Will I eventually be allowed through the pearly gates even if I don't let everyone know on Highway 285 that I want to hold hands with a whole world and sing Kumbaya? I think the answer to both is yes. Firstly, most people who want to tell the whole world that they want to coexist with everyone don't usually get any further than that. They wear their can't we all just get along feelings on their tie-dye tunics and then verbally or physically abuse anyone else who thinks differently. Secondly, who the heck wants to have I coexisted written on their tombstones? I think those are pretty shallow goals if you ask me. <clears throat> I am hoping then when God decided to send Jeff down to this world, he had bigger plans for me than just coexisting. No people, countries, or societies have ever progressed and grown through some awesome coexistence. With great leaders, which great leaders in our histories can you think of that were honored getting nothing more accomplished than just getting along? When we had to save the world from fascism, did we look to General Lovins or did we depend on General Patton? Big difference. I personally don't believe that God created this world with the hope that there would be no conflict. I'm thinking it was just the opposite. We were created to work through the pain, fight the evil, and not shy away from altercation when we were trying to do what's right. I'm actually myself contemplating making my own bumper sticker for my car saying, real men don't coexist. Now, I know what you're saying, I know what you're thinking, that's sexist, racist, homophobic, and even a bit, uh, even a little bit algonistic caladryist. That's one who hates tree frogs. Look it up. I did. That's where I got it. One who hates tree frogs. That's where it comes from. I could be all of those things, but if I'm driving a bigger car than you are, what are you going to do about it? So, I'm not really sure where the rabbi stands on this issue, but I'm guessing it'll have something to do for, with the Torah. So, is the Torah on the side of the tree-hugging, tofu-eating stoners, or does it agree with the meat and tater goblin SUV-driving macho dudes? That's the question. Yes. Yes. The answer is yes. Okay. Right. So that's what we got to find out today. You know, before we talk about coexist as a bumper sticker, yes. I just like to take a moment to talk about bumper stickers. Yes. Yeah. I'm not. A particularly, I'm not a bumper sticker guy. I'm not I either. Know if you are, I'm I, not. as a matter of fact, I know I just walked past your car in the parking lot. No bumper stickers. No bumper stickers on there. No. You know. No. Um, so I'm not really like such a bumper sticker guy. But as we see, you know, the world is heavy duty into bumper we stickers. We gotta wear our feelings somewhere. It is really interesting that people have this tremendous need to advertise something about themselves on the bumper of their car. You know, I can't imagine when my grandmother was being raised in the shtetl, mm -hmm. that when the wagons were going up down the rutted road, that like, they had like some type of, I don't know if they had bumpers, but let's say on the tail end of the wagon, they had like some, some type of eye break for going. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right, or gefilte. <laughs> you know, I don't know if they had any of that stuff there, um, but you know, why did they not have a need to advertise who you know their their feelings and what they were. I believe that this is my speculation that once upon a time people had identities. As I have read, once upon a time, maybe going back a hundred uh, to one hundred and fifty years, if you go back to let's say the year eighteen fifty. If you looked at someone, you could immediately tell what country they came from, 
perhaps what city they came from, and what socioeconomic status they were from. You could tell right away really because true, yeah. there was like Ukrainian, you Ukrainian Catholic Christian, you Ukrainian, you uh, Ukrainian Jewish, a Ukrainian wealthy Jewish, a Ukrainian wealthy Christian, a Ukrainian poor Jewish, but you know, a Ukrainian rural, a Ukrainian city, you know, all that stuff, and and at a glance, and everyone knew because people wore their identity. And that makes sense. Nowadays, of course, everything is homogenous. So if you walk down the street, so you get a guy and he's wearing torn jeans and flip-flops and he's walking his dog. So the guy could be like a millionaire who just like sold out his, his high-tech startup right. and he's filthy rich and will never have to work again a day in his life. Or he really could be a guy that can't buy a better pair of pants. He's still wearing the old ones that right. are torn up. You know, they, they could be. And he and his dog are, are both like looking around for dinner. Right. Nowadays, that's the way it is right now. So therefore, in reaction to that, people have this more desire to proclaim who they are because otherwise they drive around in total anonymity. Every, every Honda Accord looks like every Honda Accord and every person that gets out of every Honda Accord looks like every person that gets out of every Honda Accord and therefore they need to proclaim on the back you know, whatever it is. So, you know. so you're saying we, we do want to have this identity. So we have this a new we have, world. Right, we have a tremendous desire to be individuals. Even as we live in a world where everyone is so homogenous. Thinking homogenous people. Right, and we're all really a bunch of lemmings, but yet we have this desire. And the bumper in the back of the car seems to have found its way into being, whether it be swim club right, right. Or, or, you know, hug a t-shirt today. Or my, my son beat up an honor student. Right, right, right. I never right, got right. to put the honor student yeah, in my right, car. Like the, my, my, my son was an honor student <laughs> at Alcatraz or some right. street prison. My or son beat up their son. Yeah. Right. Son. He never right. right. Well, that's, no, that's true. Yeah, that's true. we got to fit in. So anyway, just I just think it's interesting, a society that has uh, bumper stickers as an idea that you, everyone, people feel a desire to somehow proclaim themselves. Now, I personally don't feel a desire to proclaim myself, and I don't know why that is, but I think partially it's because as soon as anyone takes a look at me, they already like have like this whole, you know, so I don't need to like well, go any further and put like When I met you the first time, I was getting guessing Amish or very <laughs> Jewish. <laughs> right. I was close in one so I don't need to right. really go like put stuff on my bumper, so, right. you know. But um, I, I just think it's a fascinating idea. The whole bumper sticker thing is fascinating before we, you know. No, and just to add to that, one thing that I think is even more fascinating is the people that buy the jersey with somebody else's name on it. That ain't them. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow, look at that. And you know, we look like that way. Right. You know, right. Derrick Henry looks like that. You know, I just never understood that. Right. Different. Right. I, I want to be him. Uh -huh. I am him. Well, I, I am him. Look, it's on my back of my shirt. Right. Right. So anyway, that's one thing. So then you get into the bumper stickers. Now, bumper stickers, once we get into them, so a lot of them, some of them are innocuous, like the guy says, you know, like, um, you know, whatever it is, you know, have you hugged a nurse today or, you know, whatever it is, blank, does it better or something like that, you know. So, but um, there's those type. Then there's other ones that really make statements. You know, um, my grand dog is a schnauzer. You know, like, uh, okay, like the, right, you know, like the guy's got a grand dog. Right, this whole thing. He's got a dog. He's got a grand dog already. He's a, you know all that type of stuff. So that you gotta wonder about that. You wonder like maybe the guy would really prefer to have grandkids, but he has grand dogs. But okay, you know. Then there's some that like, uh, you know, the classic war is not the answer. What well, war is not the answer? What's the question? You know, to make a statement, war is not the answer. You know, if the answer is who controls the Falkland Islands, maybe war is not the answer. Maybe you can find some other resolution for this, right? But if the answer is, how are we gonna shut down the concentration camps? War might be Maybe the war is the answer. I mean, I mean, do you have another alternative? You know, like people are getting, people are getting, getting incinerated daily. Is there, a, is, is anything else gonna stop it other than war? So to say certain things like that.
But along here we come to our coexist. With everybody. Coexist. No more right. happiness there, right. Which always, I always spot that one because my eyes are trained to pick up that mug and dove it there. As soon as I see that, right, I immediately like zone in. So I always see that coexist. And I've thought about this coexist long and hard. So there is an upside to coexist, and there is a downside to coexist. Okay, now, the the idea of coexist means that all those different symbols there, you know, you see each and every one of them. You got the mug and David, and then you got the, you know, whatever that is. I don't even know what it is. I think all of them. So all those different symbols, if they're all going to coexist, now all of them believe that there is a certain truth. They all believe there's a truth. For example, the one all the way on the end over there believes that, uh, that what should we call it, that, that God had a son. Okay? Mm -hmm. The one over here, the Mug and David guy, believes that mm, God didn't have a son, uh, but if he did, it's the Jewish people, you know, or something like that. Well, obviously, those two things, they can't coexist. Right? And I certainly don't know if the yin yang guy uh, believe like with the Christian guys and then all uh, and the Muslim that guys. Guy. Maybe he believes in nothing because he might be atheist. Right. right? So, so, sure. so really, the problem with all of them is that by acknowledging, and this is what many of the hardcore ideologues, like myself, I'm a pretty hardcore ideologue. The hardcore ideologues have a problem coexisting because. Coexisting means it's, it seems as though you've sort of sold out. You made peace with a lie. To each right. one of them. Yeah, right. that's right. I made peace with a lie. If I coexist with the atheist or if I coexist with the Christian, then what do you mean? I believe that there's a God. How can I coexist with the atheist who believes that there can't be a God? Or how can I coexist with the Christian who believes that God had a son and I don't believe God had a son? And so and the Christian can't coexist with the Jew and he can't coexist with the Muslim and all that stuff. Because their ideology, they feel like they've sold out. Right. They feel like they've sold out. So therefore, it really bothers a lot of people. This coexist thing bothers a lot of people because it's, it's, it's sort of like this big mental mush. And on top of it, people say, if you're going to coexist, that's really for like soft-minded people who really don't believe that any of them are really true. And of course, you know, that really bothers an ideologue, because an ideologue believes that what he believes is true. So, you know, how about the atheist coexist? With the atheist who believe, you know, actually, I coexist with the Catholics because they're, they really have the truth also. Well, I think, work? I think a lot of what these coexist type people would say is it doesn't matter what you believe. We all just need to love each other and get along. Right. And the atheist can get along with the rabbi, who can get along with the priest, right. who can get along with the imam. Right. So this is where coexist might really have it right. Because this might be the only true operational method that we have and are uh, and, and available to us nowadays. Because the problem with coexist is that everyone can coexist as long as everyone stays in their own silo. Right. If you stay in your little your little uh, enclave, you know, and all the if the Catholics all stay in the Vatican right. and they can do however they want it. And if you know all the Jews want to stay in their little places and they, they have their cities and then pretty much if, if they've staked out there, so if all the Mormons would just like right. hang out in, in Salt Lake City, right, right. then we'll give them Salt Lake City and you give us Brooklyn or whatever, right. you know, like oh, we'll take right. it, okay? Right. Like, if that's what you want, that's fine. And I won't go to Salt Lake City and tell you what to do, and you don't come to Brooklyn and right. tell me what to do. Right. The problem is, every now and then we have to like bump into each other. Like we have to share things like the airport and the highway right. and, and the hospital and maybe even the Internal Revenue Service and, and all kinds of things like that. And that's where it gets really dicey because that's where it's really hard to coexist. Because I'll take take abortion as a classic example. How do we coexist in a society where one guy considers this to be this act to be murder, and he feels that he has a moral obligation to 
to protest murder, whereas the other one feels that it's the greatest act of kindness in the world. And, you know, and they have to stick up for people who would otherwise be oppressed by not being allowed to have an abortion. So when those two have to come, if they all stay in their little silos, if they, if they said, okay, you know, you can have um, an abortion in the San Francisco Bay Area, right. but no abortions in Alabama, you know, I mean, maybe, maybe, you know, it is something like that. But every time we have to come out and, and have to coexist, uh, it gets really dicey. It gets oh, really, really dicey. I understand that, yeah. So then coexisting generally will mean we have to do a lot of avoiding each other. However, it just might be that it's the only practical solution. That everyone has to realize, you know, you can be whatever you are at home, but when you step out into the street, you got to like sort of go undercover and coexist and, and accept everybody and, and all that. Maybe. Now, the Torah, of course, um, has a different vision. Okay, I, I, this is, let's get, that took, you, that took you longer than normal to get I to the Torah. I knew you knew I'd get to that somewhere. <laughs> now, the Torah has a vision, and actually right now, the Torah might be in a coexist mode. Okay. But we do look forward to a time. We do look forward to a time in the Torah where the world will be one. We do believe in a certain oneness, and that oneness is that there's this one God, and God is one, and he doesn't have any parts, and that at some point, God will become manifest in the world in such a way that everyone will understand and know that God is there, and at that point, all the differences will fall away, because the reason why we've got all of that stuff up there from one extreme all the way to the other right. is because God's not really very manifest in this world. And therefore, each guy's thinking, okay, well, this is what I understand of God, this is the thing I understand of God, or this is thinking, I don't even understand there isn't any God. And they all have their resolutions. But as a, at a certain point in the future, we will come to a point where we won't coexist anymore. And that will be much, much better. See, the problem with coexist is you can never really get synergy you never really get the energy of people working together in harmony. Right. At best, you get people who have learned to respect the other guy and not to fight with them and to you know give everyone their space. But we look forward to a world that becomes one. And when that world becomes one, then everyone's going to work together. Everyone's going to have common purpose. Everyone's going to have common reality. And everyone, in their own way, in their different and unique way, right? The Jew and then all the different people in the world. Each one's going to have his own unique way and his own unique contribution. But they will all understand. They'll be under God, and then God will make the call. God's going to say abortion yes or abortion no. God's going to say you know uh, open borders yes or open borders no. God's going to say all this stuff, and no one will mind. And the reason no one's going to mind is because God's making the call. And you know when God makes the call. And you're okay it's with it. Wrong. <laughs> yeah, really everybody's okay with that. I just don't like to have to do what you tell me to do. True. If God's telling me what to do, I can like that. You know why? Because I really believe that he loves me and he's thinking about what's best for me. And that makes me feel really good. So we are perhaps practicing a coexist mode today, but we certainly, certainly aspire to a time when we go from coexist to Shalom. That's a pretty Jewish word. The shalom, if you take out the vowel in the word, it's the root of the word is shalem, shin, lamed, mem, and shin, lamed, mem is whole. Coexist is not whole because coexist by definition, there are different parts and they are all coexisting with each other. They're certainly not unified, they're just getting along. They're trying not to hurt each other too much, right? But shalom is where we want to go. And chalet means everybody is pulling together, working as one, like a crew on a ship. Everyone's got their job, everyone's doing their thing, and it makes the ship move forward in a particular direction. And then everyone can feel good when the ship arrives at its destination. Every guy, the captain, the guy in the engine room, the, the, the guy who's washing the deck, everyone feels, I got this ship in to port because we all work together. It's so much more fulfilling. But still led by one voice, one God. The only way it could ever happen right. 
would be if there's one unified belief in the world. And, you know, the only way that's going to happen is God's going to have to make it that way. You know, I don't know, we, I doubt that we would ever be able to come to that on our own. God's going to have to be, if God wants it, he'll yeah. just have to pull that one off. Well, in the meantime, in the meantime, is coexistence possible? I'll give you an example of where coexistence works a little bit. Where there's as diverse as you possibly can, where there's one side is 100% for their thing and the other thing. If you ever been to an SEC football game, Sometimes it, you go after Shabbos. They're like, 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 no, I was going to say, you know, they, usually they don't play on my day. Well, they do. They, yeah. Sometimes at night, they, they start at yes. night. Yeah. So I'll give you an example. Let's take Alabama and Georgia. Mm -hmm. they, you cannot get more different, different people. I mean, you were cheering for hours, drinking, cheering for Alabama. Besides drinking, cheering for Georgia. It was the national championship. That's why I bring it up. And because Alabama won, that's why I bring it up. But you get to the game, every play, one side screams and cheers with the other one's horrified. The next play, that side screaming and cheering, and the other side's horrified. You can get not get two further differences of opinion of what you want the outcome to be. Right. But when it's all over, you do walk out of the stadium together with not that many fights. There's going to be some fights. But everybody walks out of the stadium and they're together. Nobody really wants to kill each other. But you, they, you could not feel stronger about something than that, but they coexist. In that's co that's coexist. But could you imagine a scenario where everyone walks out of the stadium thinking that they won? No, I can't imagine that scenario. <laughs> right? Could you imagine everyone walks out equally happy and rejoicing because we won? You mean like a tie? Bear Bryant described a tie as kissing your sister. <laughs> it's it's, it's how he described what a tie yeah, is. Right. I just can't imagine that happening in, in a lot of scenarios. Right. The right. college football thing is wiped out. Then I can't, yeah. I can't discuss that. Right. Anymore. So you can see, but everyone will actually feel no. It wasn't a tie. We won. All won. We all won. So that's what we really aspire to. In the meantime, maybe coexist is an operative methodology that might work, but it certainly is not a goal. It's certainly, as far as we Jews are concerned, and probably for all of those that are listed up there, everyone really hopes that someday it'll all come out their way. Right. But in the meantime, coexist might just be an operative theology or something ology. I don't right. know if the atheists will accept the right. the, uh, theos not, yeah, part. Right. Yeah. Right. But some ology is a is it just an operative method. Uh, uh, it's a modus vivendi, just a way for us to get through the world and, and act. So the bottom line, coexistence today is not really a real, it's, we're, we're, it's a forced situation if it gets us to the end of the day. But real coexistence is in the end going to be this bumper sticker or that. It's just gonna, there's going to be a real answer. Right. Coming down from God, that's why we coexist, because right. one guy is going to tell us what we got to do. No, it could very well be that the Subaru driver right. does really believe that all of those are really just all the same and just different expressions. And that's usually them. what it really does. Yeah, mean, right? right. Okay, so as far as that goes, uh-uh. You know, because all those people that believe all those things, none of them will really ascribe to that. The atheist isn't saying, uh, yeah, I'm an atheist, but I really do believe in, in, in like Judaism and Catholicism. Right. Uh, he's not saying that. I'm not wearing an Auburn jersey, no matter what. And that's how it works. Right. That, 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 right. That, so Collins is right. not as a philosophy, but as a oh, modus oh. operandi, yeah, oh, maybe. Right. Makes sense. So at some point in the future, I'll put a a different kind of coexist bumper sticker in my car. But yeah. here we the real answer. So, you know, mm -hmm. and we just read in the Torah about this fellow Pinchas, and he took strong That's action against people that were standing up against God, disgracing God, really. And God responds and he says, I give him my covenant of shalom. Because he brought about a certain oneness, although he took harsh action. He did he, not coexist well with others. Right, he but didn't his, coexist. His answer, he took strong he an action. So I would say that a guy like Pinchas, he has a bumper sticker. Right. And on his bumper sticker, there's a light blue background, right. and there's a number one. <laughs> okay, so he... So he's pretty much one. There's one in the world, and that's what the Jews are really all about. The Jews are all about hero Israel. Lord is our God. Lord is one. We're big oneness people. And our aspiration is that the world will come to a point where everyone will grasp the oneness, and then there will be a, a, a unanimity of purpose, which will ultimately be the only real fulfilling way. 
Until then, coexist doesn't hurt, but it's not really fulfilling. Gotcha. Well, makes sense. Makes sense. All right. So next week, if we're still in coexist mode, we'll probably have another show. Right. If we're still here. Right. All right. Cool. All right. Well, we'll see you all next week.